Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we're going to learn about the constellation known as Corona Borealis, also called the Northern Crown. This is a gorgeous constellation to find, and you don't really need extremely dark skies to see it. Even if you live in an area that has a fair amount of light pollution, this is one that still can be identified. It is classified as an ancient constellation, and there are lots of legends about it. We're not going to be able to cover all of them in this video. but there are legends about Corona Borealis in Greek mythology, Aboriginal cultures, Polynesian cultures, as well as, as well as Native American ones. The name Corona Borealis is Latin for Northern Crown, and it was recorded as one of Ptolemy's 48 constellations in the second century. And this really was the catalog for many centuries in which astronomers referred to for this particular art. And Corona Australis is a similar crescent shaped pattern, but the location of it in the sky is different. So when can you see it? The best time to see it is in the Northern Hemisphere during the spring months. And the way I find it is to use the constellation called Botez. I do have a video on that constellation, so be sure to go see that one if you need help on how to find it. But what you can do is you arc to Arcturus from Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper, which is a smaller portion of Ursa Major. So you arc to Arcturus. Arcturus is a bright star in Botez, and Corona Borealis is right next to it. You want to look for this crescent-shaped pattern in the sky, and this star right here is the brightest of them all. And I do recommend you seeking out dark skies to see it. However, this constellation is fairly easy to point out in the spring sky if you know where to look. First, let's explore the pattern of Corona Borealis and how to find it in the sky. So here's the official star map released by the International Astronomical Union, and here you can see the shape of Corona Borealis. Sometimes I say it looks like a smile, other times I feel like it looks like the letter C on its side, but it's not quite a full circle, but there's a lot of mythologies behind this. Um, behind this constellation that talk about it being a full circle and how it came to be only a semicircle. So those are pretty interesting and we'll explore those in a little bit. But I do want to bring your attention to the fact that Botez is right next to Corona Borealis and this is the key to finding this constellation. Corona Borealis is also sandwiched in between not just Botez but Hercules as well. And I usually use Corona Borealis to help me find Hercules. Hercules is a much bigger constellation in the sky and not all of it really stands out. So the key to finding it for me is knowing where Corona Borealis is. I do have a whole video on Hercules, so be sure to go see that video. So if we take a look at this gorgeous picture, you can probably see that crescent shape pattern right to the right side of this photograph, and that's where Corona Borealis is. And as you look at it, notice that not all stars in this constellation have the same brightness. This one has a lower magnitude, which means it's brighter in the sky. And then also, since this is a longer exposure photograph, you can notice that the colors of the stars vary as well. But you may not really notice that when you're observing. The colors of the stars really come out when we're able to take photographs of pictures. So I want to teach you how you can use Botez to find Corona Borealis. So as you're looking at this photo, the thing that probably stands out is this bright star right here, and this is Arcturus. And you can find it by using the handle of the Big Dipper to arc to Arcturus, and I'll show you that in a second. But here is where Botez is, it kind of looks like a kite to me in the sky, and then here is where Corona Borealis is. So they sit right next to each other in the sky. And remember, to find Botez, you use the handle of the Big Dipper to arc to Arcturus, and then it will speed you to Spica. Spica is a bright star, a very bright star, in the constellation of Virgo, and I do have a video on Virgo, so be sure to go check that out if you're interested in learning how to find Virgo. So here's the Big Dipper. You use the handle to arc to Arcturus. Here is where Botez is. 
and then here is where Corona Borealis is. So I'm going to show you a few more pictures just so you can get a little bit more practice with how to find this constellation. So as you're looking at this, there are a few constellations that are in here. The main one is Hercules and then Corona Borealis. So are you able to find Corona Borealis towards the bottom portion of the photo? If you can, this is where it's located. Notice how this star kind of stands out out of the bunch. And then this is what Hercules looks like. So Hercules takes up a lot more real estate in the sky than Corona Borealis does. There is another portion of a constellation right here. This is the head of Draco, and um, most of it is off camera. I do have a video on Draco if you wanna go see that one as well. Let's keep getting some more practice. So here we have another longer exposure photograph. This is like, you know, that ideal situation where you're in a really dark sky and you can see lots of stars. And believe it or not, when you see lots of stars, it actually makes it harder to find the constellations. Um, I call it star pollution, but we have more of a light pollution problem on our planet than a star pollution one. But here you can see, this is where Corona Borealis is. And then here is the keystone in Hercules. Now, for me, the keystone is an asterism, but when I look at Hercules, I see this letter H right there. And to me, that's what stands out in the sky. But, but other astronomers see this asterism known as the keystone. If we were to point everything out, we're not even seeing the full extent of Hercules here, but we can see Corona Borealis right there. So let's get a couple more pictures here to get some practice. Here um, you can see that Corona Borealis is right here that one star. Um, sometimes it's called Gemma, sometimes I've seen it called Alfeca as well, but that's where Corona Borealis is. And thank you to David Coughlin for letting me use this photo. And we're going to keep getting some more practice here. Here we see Botez and Corona Borealis. Now, I do believe this photo that I purchased from Stock Photo is unfortunately um, kind of the colors are enhanced, but if it helps you to remember what the constellation is, then I don't see a problem with the photo being enhanced. But if we were to point out where those constellations are, that's what they look like in the sky. So if you can find Botez by arcing to Arcturus, you can definitely find Corona Borealis. Now let's examine some of the legends behind Corona Borealis. It is often the stories of the stars that we can connect to in some way, which can therefore help us remember the constellation. So one version of a story I found was from a Native American legend from the Shawnee tribe, and it talked about Corona Borealis once being this full circle of star maidens that were dancing in the sky. However, the star became incomplete over time because a, one of the maidens left to live with a mortal warrior back on Earth. That maiden eventually returned to the sky after being homesick and brought her son along with her. The gods then agreed to bring the warrior into the sky, and that star is known as Arcturus. So this is just one version of this legend, and I find with pretty much all the constellations, there's lots of variations on these stories. Another story I found was from um, a legend from Greek mythology, and this stated that Corona Borealis represents the golden crown that was worn by the princess Arid Adne, I hope I said that correctly, of of Crete when she was married to the god Dionysus. Some say that it was a wedding gift from Aphrodite, um, and Dionysus was so happy when he married the princess that he tossed her crown into the air and it transformed into the stars. So while most of the mythology lies of Corona Borealis lies within Greek culture, there are many other cultures that have their own interpretation of what Corona Borealis represents. The Arabs know Corona Borealis as the poor people's bowl, or Alfeca, which means it's broken up. That's the name of this star right here. 
The Cheyenne, a Native American tribe, called this constellation the Camp Circle because it resembles the way they arrange their camps in a semicircle. In Australia, Corona Borealis is known as Womira, the boomerang, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the Welsh associate this constellation with the castle of Lady Arenad, a Welsh goddess who gave birth to two sons using magic. So I hope I pronounced a lot of those names incorrectly, but ultimately the message I always try to share with everybody is that the mythologies of the stars really vary depending upon the time frame, the place, and the culture. There really is no one true mythology for any constellation, there's simply a variety of them. We've come to the end of our video about Corona Borealis, the northern crown, so let's review everything we've learned so far. It's best seen in the spring months in the northern hemisphere, and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. The best way to find it is to use Ursa Major. You use that, that phrase Arc to Arcturus, using the handle of the Big Dipper, and then you find Botez. Corona Borealis is right next to Botez, so it makes it really easy to find. In terms of celestial objects, there are lots of galaxies and superclusters, or galactic superclusters. I don't get to say that very often on this channel, but um, you ultimately need a telescope to see it, and we're going to do a future video on that sometime later down the road about all the different types of galaxies you can see in this constellation. So I appreciate you watching. I want to always remind you that it takes time, patience, and practice to really understand the patterns of the stars. And keep in mind that the patterns of the stars will differ depending upon the culture you're talking about. For me here on this channel, I stick to what the astronomers are looking at. So that's my lens on how I teach the constellation. So I wish you luck trying to find Corona Borealis. I do think it's one of those easier ones to find in the sky. And as always, I'm wishing you clear skies. Keep going outside, keep practicing, and of course, keep looking up. I wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to David Cochlin for allowing me to use one of his photos of Corona Borealis. You should go check him out on Twitter. He's got some amazing pictures of the sky. Thank you so much, David. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about all new videos. If you'd like to learn about the sky in greater detail, be sure to visit my website. I've got some freebies for you to download as well as online lessons and classes for you to experience. So be sure to check them out.